With Sony in need of a true mascot for the PlayStation to combat the likes of Nintendo's Mario and Sega's Sonic, Crash Bandicoot burst dick first onto the scene. Hey, plumber boy, mustache man, your worst nightmare has arrived. Promising to deliver lush, organic 3D environments filled with rewarding platforming and an overall gaming experience like none ever seen before. And to say that Naughty Dog's lovable orange no-neck f*** went on to become a monumental success would be an understatement. Things would only go up from here with the development of the rest of the trilogy as well as Crash Team Racing. After that, well, uh... Fast forward to 2017 because totally nothing happened at all to Crash between those 20 years. Crash is a perfect franchise, it did nothing wrong! NOTHING! Although the original Crash obviously kickstarted what would go on to become one of the greatest platformers and one of the most iconic figures in gaming history, how well does the original experience hold up today? Well... <laughs> the game kicks off with Crash waking up on a beach and... you start playing. That's it. For some odd reason, in order to get the full story and find out where this walking Cheeto thumb came from, you have to wait on the home screen for a little while, and next thing you know, we're inside Dr. Neo Cortex's castle with his assistant Embryo, alleged author of the Bible, Sweet your Bible I wrote it. who are trying to mutate Crash with this vortex thingy in order to build up an army of mutated animals for world domination. Oh god, not those. I guess Cortex is a failure in more ways than one. Cortex machine broke, Crash escapes, and Tana the female bandit. is prepared for the Vortex instead, and we must rescue her. Does this sound familiar? It sounds familiar. From here, we venture forward with our jumping and spinning and hog humping to rescue Peach from Bow. <coughs> Sorry. The female bandit. From Cortex. The controls are very tight, satisfying, and responsive. Although sometimes when you jump and spin at the same time, you veer off and BOOM! When you're not busy dying, which trust me, you'll die a lot, you'll be breaking crates containing wumpa fruit, which every 100 of earns you another life. There's also crates which grant you another life, and crates with Aku Aku, a magic plank, and for every one of him you collect, you gain another level of invulnerability. If you collect him three times, you become completely invincible for a limited amount of time, allowing you to run rampant through all incoming enemies, run faster, and break all crates ahead of you, which is incredibly satisfying. Some good fucking platforming. If you can break every crate in a stage, you'll be rewarded with a gem. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Collect all the gems in the game, and you'll be able to escape with P- <coughs> the female bandit. While also bypassing the final boss entirely by flying off into the night on an eagle. <coughs> anyway, sounds pretty good, right? No. Not only do you have to break every crate in these levels, you have to break every crate in these levels without dying once. Which wouldn't be too terrible if the save system wasn't horrendous. Yes, you. F you and your polygon tits. On second thought, I thought you were in another dimension. Many of the levels also have female bandit tokens in the crates. If you can manage to collect all three of these tokens in a single stage, you get to participate in a bonus round. Only if you can complete the bonus round or get a gem from the level can you save your progress. There's also two extra levels in the game that you need keys to access, and in order to obtain these keys, you have to find three Cortex icons in their respective levels and complete his bonuses. Which are much harder than the traditional bonus stages. There's also the embryo tokens you can grab in a few levels, and completing his bonuses can give you a bunch of extra lives. However, once again, these bonus stages are much more difficult than the traditional ones. Luckily, whether you pass or fail any of these bonuses has no bearing on whether or not you'll obtain a gem, so long as you don't die before reaching the end and, of course, smashing all the crates. But, as mentioned, if you don't want to go for these gems, you can use the bonuses as a method of saving. However, if you fail any of these bonuses, you cannot retry them immediately. You have to play through the entire level all over again. And some of these levels can be close to 10 minutes long. Not to mention, there are some nasty difficulty spikes, with levels like the Lost City, Sunset Vista, and Slippery Climb being notoriously <laughs> The whole system is clearly very flawed. Except this part because I am epic. Wanna know what's not epic though? 
The bosses. They're f***ing <laughs> trash. All of them except the first are minions of Cortex, which is a very nice touch. As nice a detail as this is, however, this of course does not improve the quality of the fights themselves in any way. Papu Papu is Poo Poo. Ripper Roo takes some timing, but other than that, it's really not a challenge. Koala Kong is a hunk. Please stop it. That's not even funny. That's just f***ing wrong. In all seriousness, though, Koala Kong's fight is a sizable step up from the previous two bosses. It looks great. For the time, obviously. Music's great, and he's tricky, especially for the first couple times you ever play against him. He'll throw boulders at you and drop TNT from above before you spin a few boulders back at him to finish him off. <laughs> this battle got a lot easier easier for me when I realized you could just spin away the rocks he throws at you, but it's still pretty good all things considered. Pinstripe is unbelievably bad, especially for a boss as late in the game as he comes. On the flip side, Embryo is easily the best boss in the game, throwing potions at you, sending Gak after you which you have to jump on in order to damage him, and then roaring out at the end. <laughs> Here you have to jump from the bricks falling from the ceiling and bonk him in the noggin until he's down for the count. Cortex as the final boss is good, not great. Basically you have to avoid his charge blast which you will also have to deflect back at him. It can be a bit challenging but it's good I guess, it's fine. Up to this point I've done just about nothing but bash this game. <laughs> so why is it that I love Crash Bandicoot so much? Well that's because when this game's not being absolutely <laughs> infuriating or just plain boring, it is absolutely addicting. While the reward you get for obtaining all the gems isn't really worth it since Cortex is pace easy, a large majority of these levels are insanely fun to play. <laughs> As promised, the stages you'll be progressing through are organic, lively, primitive, and realistic for the most part. In the beginning, you'll be traversing lush jungles, native fortresses, peaceful creeks, when they're not eating you alive, and hog riding. But as the game progresses, you navigate through ancient ruins, cryptic temples, roads to literally nothing, nothing, factories, laboratories, and more. This shift from natural surroundings to more industrialized and unlively environments as you close in on Cortex's castle is a subtle nod effectively showcasing what kind of effect Cortex has had on the world around him. Until Crash to Insanity when all his credibility gets sucked right out of him like a f***ing fart. The attention to detail is accompanied by a great score and even if as a whole there aren't that many memorable tracks, there are a few standouts and overall it absolutely gets the job done. So as much as Crash 1 may have aged considering Crash is stiffer than the floating board following him around, rampaging through enemies and crates when invincible, perfectly smashing all boxes over an open pit, running wild through the crates and the hog levels on your first try, and Crash's ba -da -ba! after finally acing that stage you've been stuck on for over half an hour never ever gets old. However, Crash's faulted save system, underwhelming bosses, and bullshit difficulty spikes prevent Crash 1 from being great and instead only very good. So would Crash Bandicoot 2 mix up the formula enough to help take the Crash franchise to the next level? Find out another time because we're reviewing Spyro 1 next. You got a problem with that pussy? Hey everyone, I just wanted to say thank you so much for checking out my first review. If you want to check out more videos, you can't. I haven't made any yet, so that's why they're not on the screen right now. 
You can watch the channel trailer if you want, but that'd be kind of pointless. But if you are from the future, check out my Spyro review and my review of Crash Bandicoot 2. If you really enjoyed the video, definitely follow me on the Twitter machine so you can get updates on how videos are coming along because they're not going to be too frequent. Again, thank you so, so, so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.